Alright, so in this one, we're going to be going over the Legends Management Team Newsletter, Volume 3. But to look at this real quick, uh, the banner does drop tonight. Obviously, the Super Saiyan 3 Goku is blue, Majub is yellow, their previews are on Twitter. Uh, I mentioned it earlier in the 1 p.m. Pretty sure uh, Majub, at least, has a long animation green card, which isn't great. It's a very high risk, high reward thing. If you do backdash, you will just get out of it, then you can do a card and hit them, uh, and they can't do anything about it. Goku, it's hard to tell because he goes into an animation from it, so if you miss it, then you'll be able to tell, but in the preview, obviously, they hit it, so you don't know. But, yeah, Majub seems to have a long animation green card, which isn't great. Um, it's like UI Goku and Zamasu, which isn't ideal, but, you know, it is what it is having an AoE green card. Nonetheless, it's still crazy against any player because it's hard to really counter out that. Now, to go over the... Ha, ah, newsletter. All right. Well, the newsletter. We're just going to read through it all, and then I will say my opinions on it as we go. Uh, there's a few things here that I want to touch on that could be very, 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 very amazing. And could be also probably killing the game worthy. So, yeah, let's start. All right. Thank Can't even speak. Thank you for your continued support of Dragon Ball Legends. Today, we have some additional information about the future updates introduced in July's video and stuff. The Legends Pass. The Legends Pass is planned to be in implemented in late August 2021, so next month, okay? The Legends Pass is a paid-for subscription service that renews automatically on a monthly basis. It remains valid for one month after the last payment. If the su subscription is not cancelled at least two days before the end of the valid period, it will be automatically renewed and your account charged. Okay, cool. List of perks. <laughs> this is great. Remember, um, this should have just been a quality of life update, but now it's going to be a paid service. So, Legends, good job. Prime Ticket Printing Robot. Don't know what that means. 400 plus equipment slots. Cool. Plus 5 preset slots. Cool. Faster auto mode. Cool. Plus 1 extra login bonus selection. Very good, actually. You get CC and rare medals because rare medals for ultras. CC, well, for CC or energy, whatever the fuck you want to choose. Then plus 2 adventure slots. Okay, so the 400 plus equipment slots. Of the many perks offered by Legends Pass, this one is the one that caused some confusion. Though we would like to assure you that if you cancel your Legends Pass subscription, your gameplay experience will not be neg negatively affected. Can't read, I just woke up. First, standard equipment slots are different from the additional equipment slots added by Legends Pass. If you have no- wait, what? If you have no open standard slots, newly acquired equipment will be stored in the additional slots. If the Legends Pass is cancelled, any equipment stored in these additional slots will become unusable. So I guess you don't have to sell them, you just don't get to use them until you buy the pass again. Or you get enough equipment slots to open it back up, I'm assuming. However, they can become usable again either by moving them from additional slots to standard slots or by selling other equipment. Yeah, there you go. Uh, if the number of equipment in standard slots is over the maximum, you will not be able to enter battles. But as long as you are under the maximum, you will be able to enter battles even if you have equipment stored in additional slots. So I assume it's like a new separate tab with like a Legends Pass equipment. Then you could transfer them over or they just kind of transfer over as you have open slots in your standard equipment slots. Uh, please rest sure that should you end your Legends Pass subscription, the additional equipment slots will cause no issues with the only downside being the loss of the perks offered by the service. Please expect details on the further features that come with Legends Pass when it is launched. I am curious what this prime ticket printing robot is. Like, I assume it's just maybe... I don't know, maybe a new, you know, all-star banner unit for, like, the past month. Uh, then you get, like, a ticket at the end of the month, and boom, you get to summon. And you pull one of the new units, guaranteed, who knows. That's just a random guess. Please don't think that's actually true. Okay, for the PvP features. We are planning improvements and new features of PvP at the end of 2021. So, usually they do these updates like this, the big PvP ones around December, right? So this probably won't come out till like December, November, around then, again, end of 2021, that's when it ends, right? The management and development teams are both working to make a PvP a more enjoyable experience for everyone. Below is an explanation of part of our strategy. List of features, boost characters, provisional, least leader slot, provisional, improvement of ranking system. Given, I've seen some of this, by the way, I've, I haven't read it all, but I've seen some of the highlights and uh, we're getting to them right here. So, boost characters. To increase the usage of underplayed characters, PvP, and new characters who have not been limit broken, we are currently developing a boost feature similar to the Terminal Power Mode's tier, list, or tier system. Who have not been limit broken. 
Well, what do they consider limit broken? Because a three star is a limit break, a four star is a limit break. I'm assuming they mean like, I don't know, below three star or at three star? Because getting a unit to two stars isn't a limit break because you pull them at 600, right? For sparkings, at least. Um, if it's for low star new units, that's cool. Like LF units, giving them a little bit of boost because they're not going to be so phenomenal at low stars. Okay, that'd be cool. Uh, we plan to change the affected characters regularly. We're similar to the Tournament of Power, the least used characters get the strongest boost while maintaining a slot available for new characters. An example of that would be like Boo Tanks, who is complete ass in every other regard of the game, but Boo Tanks is very good for Tournament of Power. I assume they'll do some situation like that. Let's say Green Bardock, who's super old and dated, but he'll have a boost for this one season because we have a Frieza Saga themed celebration. He'll get a boost. Like, that type of thing. I, I guess, like, it's a guess, sorry, I, I don't know. One way in which this will differ from the Terminator Power Mode is that characters who receive a boost in PvP will have their abilities enhanced in raiding matches for the duration of the season. This way, the most used characters will consistently be changing, and everyone can expect to enjoy competing in PvP with a wide variety of different teams. Okay, that makes it sound like they're gonna have big boost, because... The most used characters will consistently be changing. That implies that the old characters will have big boost. Okay. Um, it's worrying, but it's an update. And if it changes the meta to make it more diverse, I'm here for it. To ensure that the boost features main aim... Wait. The features main aim of strengthening characters that aren't used much or have not been limit broken many times do not spoil the overall balance of Legends. We plan to continue to make finding adjustments to the system after its implementation. We will be very grateful for you to continue to share your valuable opinions with us. All right, now this, this one's a controversy, huh? All right, let's talk about it. Z abilities, leader slot. Z abilities, which are at the heart of Legends party formation, have had to be carefully considered in conjunction with tags and elements when forming a party. However, this has also led to characters with certain tags being difficult to use for certain players. To expand party building options and to make characters more easy to use, we are currently planning a leader slot. The character placed in the leader slot, of which there is one per party, will receive the following perks. They will receive the benefits of all party Z abilities that specify certain tags or episodes regardless of whether or not they meet those requirements. This does not apply to Z abilities or Zenkai abilities that, do, that specify certain element characters uh, and so on. So. An example of what they don't apply to is, let's say, Kakarot Goku. He's not going to uh, give health to every single guy because that is applied to certain characters, right? Uh, let's say the, the blue EX Fat Boo. He's not going to give that 50% to every other character because it's a color-based buff. Those buffs are too extreme, too good for them to actually implement to every single character. So... To go over what this actually means, the first part of it at least, they will receive the benefits of all party Z abilities that specify certain tags or episodes. So let's say, and they give you an example down here, but let's say, um, uh, I don't know. Let's say, Re Red Revival Cell, right? He will receive all the Z abilities from a Saiyan team, from a hybrid team, from, I don't know, Super Warrior team. He will get all their Z ability buffs because he is your leader unit. It's a similar aspect to Dokkan and it's not in true and true the same thing, but it's similar to where you have a leader based thing that is kind of making what your team is centered around. So let's say you want to run Revival Cell. Okay, then you run, <laughs> really can't say team, Revival Gohan, Revival Super Saiyan Blue Goku. You can build that team now when this update comes at December, or whenever it comes, the end of this year. Because Cell doesn't matter that he's not part of the tag, he's going to get the Z abilities because he's your leader unit. All those other units can support each other, that's fine and dandy, but Cell, because he's your leader, will get the Z abilities of that Revival Gohan, of that Super Saiyan Blue Goku. He will get all of that because it doesn't matter when he's your leader unit. It can make for some interesting teams, but let's just continue reading, then we'll go over that at the end. Their own Z ability that specifies certain tags or episodes will apply to all the members 
where, where it ordinarily would not. So like Cell, um, he would have whatever, uh, whatever he buffs, like Blast Attack and Defense or whatever the fuck, would apply to everyone else because he's your leader unit. And the same vice versa. All their buffs would apply to him because he's your leader unit. This does not apply to Z abilities or Zenkai abilities that specify certain elements, characters, and so on. So Zenkai units necessarily won't thrive from this. It's more just going to be normal ass sparkings or whatever, EXs maybe. Uh, even like Gokua, right? Because he's giving, what, health and strike attack? That's going to apply to everyone, whoever he runs with? That's pretty good. I mean, you know, giving health to a full tag is probably going to be the highlight of a leader unit. If you have a leader unit like that, like let's say Super Saiyan God Goku, he could give health and critical to any tag in the game now if he's your leader unit. And if he's a boost unit one season, I mean, that'd be crazy, no? This feature will create po new possibilities for viable teams such as adding Goku to parties based around powerful opponent or Frieza tag same parties. Yeah, because if you had Goku on powerful opponent, he would get all their Z abilities and he would give his Z ability to all of them. And... Uh, the other five units, by the way, you have to make them cohesive. It essentially just adds one extra randomness or to your team. So you can rock a random uh, Super Saiyan Blue Future Goku on your regen team. And he's going to get their buffs and they're going to get his buff. But that regen team, that five other members, should be a cohesive regen team. It's just that you have this additional unit you can put. Which, yes, it does allow for different ways to play the game but i feel like it's going to be very abused again we'll talk about this at the end when i actually can discuss this more um so just adding yeah blah blah or freeze it to the same parties another aim of this is for users who are still new to the game to be able to get the most out of the new characters abilities by putting them in the leader slot in tandem with the improvement to the ranking system detail below we hope that this will make pvp more accessible furthermore the leader slot will not influence the effects of unique abilities or equipment and as such, there will be no changes to unique abilities that specify tags or episodes. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Alright, I mean, that's a good thing, isn't it? There's no changes to that, at least. It's just, essentially, just you're adding another new unit, like I said, just on a random team. In addition, leader slot perks will not apply to Zenkai Waken characters. So, again, like LF Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, he cannot, essentially, be a leader, because he won't get... A full regen team's buffs. He won't. That's just not how it's going to work. This is good. Uh, Zenkai's don't need more help. However so. That Zenkai waiting thing does not put you at a disadvantage. We plan to add a feature that will allow you to deactivate and switch between Zenkai Awakening at the time the leader slot is implemented. That's interesting. That is interesting. Okay. Cool. Uh, ranking improvements. Development is underway for several improvements to rating matches and battle rank. Such as better matchmaking at the start of season so they handle of unfair play and rewards for pvp users who rank outside of the top 20,000 and more we're currently in the planning stage for these features that will be added at the end of the year and beyond so please look forward to them we will notify you with further details about these features when we are close to their implementation we appreciate your patience other improvements to make your legend experience a more enjoyable one we are whether you are aiming to be the best in the world or just play casually we are currently making adjustments to the game in all areas. Here are a few of them. Adding of a rematch option to co-op when you play with a friend or guild member. They should just add it to every single thing because if I run into a 9-star full power Frieza, you bet your ass I want to run into that guy again and again. And if he wants to help me out with my trash-ass UI Goku for this difficult-ass co-op, hey, I want to do that, but sure, guild member or friend, that's nice. Changes to equipment upgrades. I hope that means equipment, like, awakened equipment, because they need fucking changes. Regular equipments aren't that terrible. Just awakened equipments, please God help them. And then shortening of all connection and load times. We're developing these features so that everyone can continue to enjoy Legends even more. In closing, this has been a lot of information, so thank you for reading all the way to the end. Once again, we aim to implement the, the many features listed here toward the end of the year. Please be aware that in order to ensure that they can be presented to you at their highest quality, the plans are subject to change. Further information will be shared as and when it becomes available through future editions of video and stuff and messages from the management team, so please stay tuned. Legends is now in its fourth year. The management and development teams alike are continuing to strive to give you more, look, more to look forward to and be excited about than ever before. We hope you continue to enjoy Dragon Ball Legends. So let me show you guys what this would mean, right? So let me just 
go into this real quick. Uh, yeah, this is the team I used earlier. Whatever. Uh, let me put Ramon right here. Ramon would get... Let me just... Whatever. Um, I'm just going to make this so it's non-Zenkai, so it's very uh, blatant what I'm showing you here. So the Zenkai stuff doesn't really matter. All right. So Ramon, if this update were live, Ramon would be getting all the Z abilities of my team. Yes. All six of them. He would have his own and then the other five. They would not be... There would not be a discrepancy of tags because he is my leader unit. Then, everyone else would be getting Ramon's Z ability. So, what Ramon offers would be whatever it is, whatever this guy does. Double attack. So, everyone else, because Ramon's my leader unit, will be getting double attack from Ramon. It doesn't matter that they're not on the tag. It's just that he's the leader. So, he's getting everything from them and he's giving them what he offers. That's how this will work, from what we know. Uh, like they said, they could change the implementation, they could change everything, they could, you know, not even implement it as they're saying they will now, because it's just, uh, to give us a little bit of a, I don't even know what the word is, it's just to give us a little hindsight into what they're doing, right? They're not trying to spoil everything, they won't even tell us what the thing that's coming the end of next month will offer with the ticket and all that shit, but... They're trying to give us a little bit of information, which obviously is good. Legends is probably one of the best communicating gacha games. I know people like to shit on Legends 24-7 because Legends... Oh my god, Zenkai's! Oh my god, Broken! And I'm also a complainer of this because a lot of things are unbalanced in the game. But in the terms of they like to communicate and actually, you know, make the game as best as they can by getting feedback, they're at least good at that. Um, to go over, by the way, just to mention this, I did talk about that this banner is going to come tonight, yes. But, uh, I'll probably do Goku Showcase first, and then, well, it depends, right? Ideally, I'm going to do Goku Showcase first, then 1pm would be Majub Showcase, and then 7pm would be the Summons. Or, if the Summons are just goaded beyond belief in God tier, I'll upload the Summons first, and then I'll upload, uh, Goku Showcase right after that, then Majub Showcase at 1, then whatever the fuck for 7, I'll figure it out. But yeah. Uh, ideally, Goku Showcase will be up first, so, yeah. Unless you guys think he's less hype, which I'll probably already have a poll up by, like, before this video goes up, uh, asking, who do you guys want to see first, Goku or Majub? I assume Goku, because it's fucking Goku, people like Goku. So, yeah, we'll be doing that, uh, without the booster pack bought, so I'll just, you know, pull him to three stars, whatever I pull him to in 20k CC, uh, then I'll showcase him from there. All videos after that will have him with the booster pack already bought, uh, all the missions done, and at his high highest star potential, I can get him to with my 20k CC and the booster pack itself. So yeah, that'll be tonight. Uh, but to overall just go over that, I think it's a good implementation in some regards, right? Okay, let me just throw this out there because this is going to be a thing that happens. Um... Let's say Angel Vegeta, let's say Vados, they can be run on any singular team in the game. That's not fun. Uh, Vados, yes, while being locked to healing only God Key and I believe rival universe units. You can still throw her, offer that support, offer the bullshit green card, that lower sub count, all this, which is not broken, it's just... There's a lot of negatives that can come with this, as well as positives. I do like the idea that, okay... I can genuinely just run a random unit, and, well, that random unit is going to be good. He doesn't have to be a GT unit like this team to be good. He can be literally any unit in the game, besides Zenkai Awakened units, because, well, they don't fucking need it. Um, and then you could probably turn off Zenkai Awakening. Like they said, they might implement that. Uh, you could turn off Zenkai Awakening, probably to allow you to use these other units without Zenkai Awakening. They have all Z abilities, whatever. It'll make old units viable, right? So, uh, for an example, who is an old unit here, right? Let's just look. Uh, who's an old unit that you want to run, but you can't really run because, I don't know, their team's not good enough. Yellow Hit. Yellow Hit's really fucking good. I I'll be honest with you. And if I can run Yellow Hit on, let's say, here. I run Yellow Hit here. Yellow Hit's getting an HP buff from Gokua. Yellow Hit's getting a lot of Z abilities. It'll be a crazy team, and it allows you to run units that you wouldn't ideally see because their teams aren't good enough, this is that, this is this, this is why, blah blah blah, all these other reasons why you wouldn't necessarily run them, 
with this update again coming out in the end of the year so december most likely um offers that chance to run whatever you'd like so i would say i'm optimistic i, I don't know because i did mention the first thing i really mentioned was you run a triple revival team with sun family basically then you pop red rival cell in the beginning slot he's your leader then you have a triple six life revival team given it actually will be pretty good because so yeah he's gonna get all the z abilities and give his own z ability you can run some cancerous shit if they don't restrict it but the overall implementation will offer just i don't know you'll see i can't even think of units because it's so vast right you can literally run any unit on any team any one unit on any team let me specify that i don't know you'll see ui goku on regen like I i'm down for that i, I really am i'll see what uh launch i never see launch her team's bad her teams aren't good i'll see launch on sun family a blast based sun family team or something i don't know um anything you could legitimately see anything on any team i could see android 17 on loe uh purple vegeta blue on fucking hybrids like you can run anything you want with that update i think that is a phenomenal thing that they are doing i just worry that their implementation will allow some really really cancerous shit it is worrying because it's something that can happen legends does this process of a lot of steps forward but a lot of steps backward in the same uh, well scenario right this can be a million steps forward but a million and a half steps backward if they don't restrict this in at least some manner to talk about the other stuff uh really the only other thing is the pvp for old units basically lower limit break units that are new units or old units will get boost in pvp to do extra damage to do i don't know whatever they do uh, maybe even dragon ball chance up if they really want to be cancerous and i mean that's cool i mean let's say you pull majub to three stars and you're like okay well and let's say this update were already out right Look, hypothetical this update was already out you pull majub to three stars uh he's a new unit he's a boost unit but you don't really have a fusion team a gt team or anything to run him on so you're like oh shit what do i do well the update's out you can run this guy on your fucking regen team he doesn't even need the regen tag he's your leader unit you can run him on regen there you go you see it's a really good update that allows any player to really gain an advantage from it given obviously you spend more you have higher stars you won't really get the boost which probably doesn't matter because the boost probably evens out to the star discrepancy so let's say it's like a three star a, and then the boost only goes at three star units a four or five star six star unit will probably have a little bit more damage than that three star unit that's boosted with the four or five or six star unit that's not boosted it'll just be a little bit of discrepancy to help the less summoning players or the more free-to-play players right i think that's all good i just hope they implement these things well i really do let me know you guys think of this newsletter um do you think it is good bad or do you think there needs to be a lot of tuning to make it work out uh i personally am excited for it again this shit ain't coming until the end of the year december not soon at all please understand that i think it's a good way to change up pvp i think it will change up pvp drastically which i am ready for trust me i am happy to see that i just thought you could use ultras ultras aren't restricted you can use ultras on any team you damn want i can use ultra vegeta on frieza force oh that's beautiful i love that wow i'm vegeta family oh wow yeah tags don't matter for the leader unit because they'll just get the Oh, I really like this. All right. Yeah, I like this. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.